Hi, now here we've got an example based around the power concept. And if you'd like to uh, give this question a try, just pause the video. You can go straight to the relevant sections uh, of the solution though, just by clicking on the buttons that you see at the bottom of the screen here. Now in this first part, we're told that a lorry of mass 1,800 kilograms travels along a straight horizontal road and the lorry's engine is working at a constant rate of 30 kilowatts. When the lorry's speed is 20 meters per second, its acceleration is 0.4 meters per second per second. And the magnitude of the resistance to the motion of the lorry is R newtons. And what we've got to do is find the value of R. So the first thing I'd want to do is just draw a sketch of what's happening. What we've got here is say our horizontal road and we'll just draw a simple block here to represent the lorry. Now we're told that the lorry has a mass of 1,800 kilograms so I'd want to mark on its weight here as 1,800 g okay newton's g the acceleration due to gravity i'm going to take as 9.8 when it comes to that if ever we need to use it and what else would we have we'd have a contact force which i'm going to call r normally but i notice that r is used for the resistance to motion of the lorry so i'm going to call this r with a little subscript l there so we've got a resistance to the lorry, so assuming it's moving to the right, the resistance is going to act to the left, so that would be R newtons. And there must clearly be a driving force pulling the lorry along towards the right. So I'm going to call that driving force D, D newtons. All right? Now we're also told that this lorry is moving at 20 meters per second at a particular time, 20 meters per second, and it is at the same time accelerating, so just do a double arrow to the right, it's accelerating at 0.4 meters per second per second. So I feel that that's the diagram that I would need for this. So how are we going to work out R then? Well, first of all, what I'm going to do is turn to the power equation, which is power equals the driving force times the velocity. Work out what that driving force D is, and then I'm going to use Newton's second law by considering motion to the right, and I should be able to form an equation which will work out that resistance R. So, we start then with the power equation. Remember, power is equal to the driving force multiplied by the velocity, okay? So the power, we're told, is 30 kilowatts, but we need to change this into watts. So that's going to be 30,000 watts. And we therefore have 30,000 watts is equal to the driving force d times the velocity which is going to be 20. It's a formula that you should know. Let me just write it up here. I'll say but p equals dv. Okay. So we can now divide both sides by 20 and if you do that d turns out to be 1500. Now that we've got that driving force we can apply Newton's second law, that is force equals mass times acceleration, by resolving to the right. So we've got the driving force, 1500, minus the resistance here, R, is going to equal the mass, which is 1800 kilograms, multiplied by the acceleration, which is 0.4. So we just need to rearrange this equation to get R. If we add R to both sides and subtract this value here, we end up with R equaling 
1,500 minus 1,800 multiplied by 0.4. And if you work that out, what you should find you get is 780. So therefore, what we have is R equals 780. Now in this next part, we're told that the lorry now travels up a straight road which is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal, where sine of alpha equals 1 12th. And the magnitude of the non-gravitational resistance to motion is R newtons. The lorry travels at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. And what we've got to do now in part B is to find the new rate of working of the lorry's engine. Now, we're going to be using the same value of R that we found earlier in part A. And that value was 780. So to do this part of the question, again, we need to sketch a diagram. So what we'll have is our hill, OK, our slope here. Just draw that in. and we're told it's inclined at an angle alpha. So there's our angle alpha. Sine of alpha equals 1 12th. We don't need to work out what the inverse sine is of 1 12th to get the angle alpha. We'll generally find that we'll be able to work with just this value of 1 12th. We'll draw our lorry in, OK, just as a simple block here, OK? So we'll just have it looking something like this. We know its mass is 1,800 kilograms, so if we just draw its weight in down here, that weight is going to be 1,800 times the acceleration due to gravity, g, and that will be measured in newtons. We've got the contact force from the lorry, okay, which uh, normally I'd mark it in as R, but we'll just call it RL newtons, okay? in this case, because there's that resistance to motion, R, which stays exactly the same in this part of the problem. I'm going to put that as 780 newtons there then. And there's this new driving force pulling the lorry up the incline. Now, we're told that the lorry travels at a constant speed of 20 meters per second. So it's going up here at 20 meters per second, just mark that in there, 20 meters per second. It's a constant speed, so as far as acceleration goes, that acceleration is going to be 0 meters per second per second. And whenever I'm working with inclined planes, it's a good idea to mark in a line or a dotted line perpendicular to the plane and this angle is always the same as the angle of the incline. So I feel that that would be a typical diagram for this problem. So when we're asked to find the new rate of working of the lorry's engine, we've essentially got to work out that power that the engine is working at. So to do this, I'm going to, I'm going to be thinking that power is equal to the driving force times the velocity here of 20. Problem is, I don't know what d is. So I must th therefore get d by considering applying Newton's second law of motion up the plane. Resolving up the plane, considering force equals mass times acceleration. That will enable me to get d, and then I can put it into the equation for power equals driving force times velocity. All right? So let's start there then. We'll start by resolving up the plane. And that means that we've got our driving force d minus the component of the weight down the plane. So that's going to be 1,800 g. And then we've got sine of alpha. So that's the component's weight down the plane. Then we've got this resistive force here, minus 780. And this is our resultant force. 
and because there's no acceleration it's moving at a constant speed that's going to be zero so if we rearrange this for d by adding both terms here to both sides we therefore have d equals 1800 times g g being 9.8 sine of alpha is 1 12th okay and then we've got plus the 780. If you work that out you'll find that that value of D turns out to be 2250. Now we can work out the power because we can say therefore since power okay equals the driving force D times the velocity V and if you work this out you'll be doing 2250 multiplied by V which is 20 and this comes to 45,000 watts you might want to express it in kilowatts in other words it's going to be 45 kilowatts 45 kW there